Hey there everyone, welcome to FJX 2000 Productions and another episode of Let's FJ. In today's episode, I wanted to discuss a topic that I've seen constant questions about ever since I got an FJ myself, and that is FJ cruiser buttons and switches. In the center console, or on the sides of the steering wheel, the FJ has a total of 10 switch locations most of the time, with some FJs having up to 13 locations. This makes the FJ perfect for adding additional accessories that can be turned on or off with the press of a button, or even adding clever add-ons like USB ports or digital readouts for dual battery voltage and whatnot. However, when it comes to the OEM switches that come on certain FJs, or what they do, many folks have questions about what they are, or how they work. Well, in this video, I will explain all of those and hopefully answer any questions you have. Feel free to ask additional questions in the comments below, but if this video is helpful to you, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. My goal lately has been to get to 5,000 subscribers, and with your help, we can make that happen. I appreciate all of you for watching my informational FJ Cruiser videos, and encourage you to check others out after this one. But anyways, let's get started. The buttons that came on the FJ depended on the year, if your FJ was two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, whether it had an automatic or manual transmission, which specific convenience or upgrade package you got, and what other accessories your FJ came with. It is important to note that it is possible that the switches have been moved around on your specific FJ if it had a previous owner, or additional aftermarket switches could have been added. But I will talk about each of the factory switches, where they are normally located, and what they do in this video. The first switch I will cover is the RR Diff Lock switch, which stands for Rear Differential Locker. This switch is more commonly found on four-wheel drive FJA cruisers, but is also available for specifically equipped two-wheel drive ones. The switch is usually located in this position on most FJ cruisers, unless it is an automatic 2013 or 2014 FJ cruiser also equipped with crawl control, in which case it is located here on the ceiling. And it is the rear diff lock symbol versus the letters spelling out RR diff lock. As the name of the switch implies, this switch electronically locks the rear differential, making it so both rear tires spin in sync with each other, no matter what. It is an awesome way to get additional traction when off-roading, since you never have to worry about one of the rear tires slipping. But, this feature only works when the transfer case is in 4-low for auto 4-wheel drive FJs, or in LL on manual 4-wheel drive FJs. Otherwise, it can work at any time on 2-wheel drive FJs. Note, there are wiring hacks that can be done, so even 4-wheel drive FJs can activate the rear locker in 2-wheel drive. But no matter what model you have, the rear locker should only be engaged when on loose surfaces and not when turning sharply, as it could cause the axles to bind up and has the potential to cause damage. For more details on the usage of this or any of the following switches, be sure to consult the FJ Cruiser owner's manual. Next is the A-Track switch, which stands for Active Traction Control. This button is usually located right next to the rear diff lock switch, even on the crawl control equipped FJs, but it is only available for four-wheel drive FJ cruisers. A-Track can only be activated when the FJ is in four low, or LL, similar to the rear differential locker. However, it functions differently. When in low four-wheel drive, if you are experiencing either the front or rear wheel slipping, with the press of the button, A-Track will activate, and it sort of acts like a limited slip differential. The FJ will detect which wheel is experiencing the wheel slippage, and the brakes automatically apply more on that wheel, forcing the power to the opposite wheel, which still has traction, thus allowing for maximum traction and forward momentum to be gained. This system works on both the front and rear axles of the FJ, and some FJ owners swear by its dependability and added capability, stating that they never even need to use the rear locker because of it. But for FJ cruisers built around November of 2006 or later, the FJ allows for the rear locker and A-Track to be run simultaneously, meaning the A-Track works on the front axle and the locker works on the rear. This gives the FJ the absolute maximum amount of traction possible. For early FJs built between March and October of 2006, the issue of the rear diff lock system overriding the A-Track system was present, allowing the user to only use one system or the other, unless you did a clever wiring hack. But when Toyota started making the 2007 TRD Special Edition in November 2006, they revised the FJ's programming so the systems could work in tandem, 
So, if you have a 2007 FJ Cruiser and are unsure if the systems can work together, be sure to check the build date on your door jam sticker or go out and test it yourself. One neat thing is not every FJ came with the A-Track button installed, but if your 4x4 FJ already has the rear diff lock button and no A-Track, all you have to do to add A-Track is purchase the switch online, pull out the dummy button next to the diff lock button, and plug it in to the existing wiring. Boom! Just like that, you have a rear locker and A-Track. However, if your FJ does not already have the rear locker, you cannot add A-Track alone. And further, you cannot simply add a rear diff lock button and expect to have a rear locker, as the rear axle is different on rear locker equipped FJs and non-rear locker equipped FJs. When it comes to auxiliary light switches, FJ Cruisers in North America had optional roof air dam off-road lights or bumper driving lights available. The switches for these lights could be located in various spots depending on the year of your FJ. For example, on 2007 and 2008 FJs, they were typically on the left side of the switch panel, with the top being used for the roof lights and the bottom being used for the bumper lights. In later years, they were usually located in the bottom left and bottom right corners of the switch panel. The button for the OEM air dam roof lights usually had a little curved line below the light icon, indicating the roof, while the bumper light button only had the light icon. Many folks ordered these light buttons and used them for their own aftermarket lights, or even used other buttons that looked OEM but displayed unique icons or text to help better identify the function of the light, such as fog lights, backup lights, etc. The subwoofer switch was only found on 2007 to 2010 FJs with Upgrade Package 2, as these models had the upgraded 9-speaker sound system that included the 8-inch OEM subwoofer in the rear cargo area. The switch was always located in the top right corner of the switch panel and simply turned the subwoofer on or off on command, though the OEM head unit did have a tuning knob for adjusting the bass tone level already. This button, unlike many others, was not backlit as it has no internal bulb. But for 2011 and newer FJ models, the JBL sound system replaced the older Toyota audio system, and the subwoofer button was no longer utilized even in models that had the JBL subwoofer in the rear. For any year of the FJ, the rear cargo area 115 volt 400 watt power outlet was available as part of the upgrade packages offered from Toyota. The outlet's inverter could be turned on or off with the press of the outlet button, always located here on the switch panel. When pressed, the lights in the switch would illuminate depending on the maximum amount of watts available, which is determined by whether or not your FJ is in gear or not. When driving, only the bottom yellow light illuminates, signifying that only 115 volts at 100 watts are available. But when parked and stationary, the top green light also illuminates, and the full 115 volts at 400 watts are available. The words AC115V on the switch itself, however, are not backlit, and the switch doesn't work when the vehicle is turned off, and the switch should only be used when the FJ is turned on. This switch is the backup parking sensor switch, which was available for all years of the FJ, even for the 2009 and up models that included a backup camera. When this button is pressed, it will illuminate, and any time the FJ is put in reverse, a chime will sound momentarily to indicate that the system is working. Then, as you back the FJ up and approach an object in your path, the sensors will detect this and start beeping faster and faster the closer you get, until they continuously ring, indicating that you shouldn't reverse any further for risk of hitting the object behind you. Though it isn't a flawless system, it does come in handy and it is a helpful feature to have for how difficult it can be to see behind you when reversing in the FJ, especially without a backup camera. For early two-wheel drive FJ Cruiser models in 2007 and 2008, they could come equipped with an auto LSD switch. LSD stands for Limited Slip Differential and when this button was engaged, it essentially acted like a limited slip differential, or like what we discussed earlier, the A-Track system, except for only the rear axle since it was on two-wheel drive FJs. Meaning, if one rear wheel had traction and the other were spinning, the FJ would detect this and apply the brakes on the spinning wheel side, forcing the power to the opposite wheel in order to gain traction and forward momentum. This was a great feature to have in case you didn't have an FJ equipped with the rear diff locker, but some FJs came with both, 
giving you the option of which system to use. However, as previously mentioned, starting in 2009, this switch was no longer found on two-wheel drive FJ cruisers and was replaced by the next switch we will discuss, the VSC off switch. The VSC off switch was added for 2009 and up FJ cruisers and allowed for several neat features to be activated or deactivated depending on if the FJ was two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. VSC stands for Vehicle Stability Control and this switch was always located in the top left corner of the switch panel. If you had a two-wheel drive FJ cruiser, pressing the button would turn off VSC but would also activate Auto LSD. So even though the 2009 Plus two-wheel drive FJ cruisers didn't have the Auto LSD button anymore, that system's functionality wasn't lost. For two-wheel drive FJs and four-wheel drive automatic FJs, with transfer cases set to 2H, if the VSC off switch was held down for three seconds, this would turn off both VSC and track systems. For automatic four-wheel drive FJs in 4H mode or manual FJs in H or HL mode, when the VSC off switch was pressed, only track would be disabled, but if the button was pressed for three seconds, both VSC and track would be disabled. Though the earlier 2007 and 2008 FJ cruisers didn't have the VSC off switch, there are plenty of write-ups on the forums for how to do your own wiring hack in order to have the same feature or you can simply unplug a certain plug in the engine bay for the same results temporarily, but having an actual switch is certainly preferred. For manual transmission FJ cruisers, on the left side of the steering wheel, the left button would be occupied by the clutch start cancel switch. This switch allowed for the FJ to be started in first gear without having to depress the clutch pedal, which was intended to aid in getting the FJ started and rolling in tricky off-road situations. This button is only designed to work when the FJ is in LL since it is intended for off-road situations versus being used for daily driving. If you were off-roading in low four-wheel drive with your manual FJ but had killed the engine, say on a steep hill, by turning the key to the on position, pressing the clutch start cancel switch, the light on the button would illuminate showing it was ready and having the transmission in first gear, then without pressing the clutch pedal and simply with the turn of the key, the FJ would turn over and you would begin rolling forward immediately as the FJ is already in gear. Another switch added in 2009 and on was the RSCA switch, which stands for rollover side curtain airbags. This button was located to the left of the steering wheel in the right button slot and is intended to be pressed when you plan on off-roading and getting into off-camber situations. The FJs for 2009 and newer were designed so that at a certain angle of off-camber tilt, the airbags would automatically deploy, like in the case of a slow speed rollover, versus being triggered by a harsh impact. This button, when pressed, disables the side curtain airbags, so if you off-road and happen to get tilted at a pretty good angle, your airbags won't accidentally deploy. Be sure to engage this feature when off-roading anytime you turn on your FJ to avoid having side curtain airbags deploy unnecessarily. The next switch is really only ever seen on 2007 FJ cruisers, and it confuses a lot of people. No, it isn't an alien abduction button, and no, it is not an in-vehicle Wi-Fi button, or even an ejector seat. Rather, it is a security off switch for the 2007 FJ cruisers that had the Toyota's VIP vehicle intrusion protection security system, or the RS3200 Plus security system, as it is also known. This button came on FJs that had the VIP security installed from the factory, and it allowed for folks to disable the more sensitive alarm system after the vehicle has been turned off but before it has been locked. That way, if you happen to have a pet in the vehicle or are camping in the back of the FJ with it locked, internal movements won't set off the alarm system. It is also a useful button if you have an aftermarket remote start system. On my first FJ, I had such a system, and if I didn't disable the VIP security and later tried to start the FJ remotely, the OEM alarm would go off. This system only worked for FJs with remote keyless entry, or in other words, for FJs with the convenience package. But for FJ cruisers that didn't have this system installed at the factory, and rather had it added on by Toyota dealerships, they had the Toyota Security Button which is actually a small microphone that can detect glass breakage and set off the alarm if that event were to occur. 
But with these VIP setups, there unfortunately was no way to calibrate their sensitivity, and if you didn't have the system installed by the factory, there was no convenient off switch. And as far as switch sizes go, the standard switches in the center console and side of the steering wheel are 1.54 inches by 0.38 inches, or 39 millimeters by 21 millimeters, while for the 2013 and 2014 FJs with crawl control, the ceiling switch panel houses slightly smaller and more square switches that are 1.28 inches by 0.87 inches, or 32.5 millimeters by 22 millimeters. And that is all I have today as far as FJ Cruiser OAM switches go. There are of course lots of aftermarket switches available on the market that are either designed to look OAM and fit in the existing slots just fine once the black filler buttons are removed, or there are classic rocker style switches that with some trimming can be made to fit into the switch slots. You can customize your button configurations however you see fit, and you can get special switches for custom modifications like additional auxiliary lighting, air compressors, front air lockers, and more. The OEM switches also often have little bulbs in them, some only having one, but others having two. And if you notice that one has burned out, replacing the bulbs is very simple, and I will leave a link in the description to a thread I did on the FJ Cruiser forums about that very subject. But hopefully this video has been helpful to you, and has given you an idea of what all these factory FJ Cruiser switches are, or how to use them. Again, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And remember to like this video if it was helpful to you. Also, subscribe for more FJ Cruiser content and to help me reach my 5,000 subscriber goal. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.